Hey, it's Alberto Lombardi. Let me teach you how to play Pride and Joy from our beloved Stevie Ray Vaughan. <laughs> As usual, I prefer to teach E flat tuning refs in E standard for everybody's convenience. Okay, how about I play the old ref very slow? Let's do it. One, two, three, four, one. There is a couple of devices that Stevie Ray used to make it sound as it does, an adaptive picking pattern and the Texas shuffle. Watching him play the song, you will notice that his right hand picking is not always alternate. He actually adapts it for comfort and or sound. We will take a look at this a little later. The first thing you want to nail is the basic comping style known as Texas Shuffle because everything else, all the notes, etc., rest upon it. If you are already familiar with this, you can skip to the next chapter on the scroll bar down here. Let's take a look at this comping style and divide it into three main components. The right arm, the right hand, and the left hand. What's a shuffle, anyway? We take a beat, Then divide each beat into three equal parts. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, ta ka ta ta ka ta ta ka ta Let's remove the second note. So we end up with just one and three. ta 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 Here's the shuffle. It's basically a triplet without the middle note. Okay, first component, right arm. It's doing a little circle. Think about the lever on the wheel of a train. Let's break it into the three movements using the triplet of the shuffle. One, two, three, one, two, three. On the one, you're down. On the two, you pull your elbow and arm backwards, like this. On the three, the elbow goes back forth on its initial position. Meanwhile, you raise your forearm a bit, like this. On the one, you go down to the initial position. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Obviously, this is just a scheme. The final movement should be fluid and less obvious, and its components overlap a little. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Second component, the right hand. It also does a little circle. On the upstroke, you turn your forearm clockwise while raising the wrist a tiny bit. This happens on the two, while pulling your elbow, like this. On the downstroke, on the three, you turn your forearm counterclockwise and the wrist goes back flat like this and this, 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 
this, this. Also, on the upstroke, you go deeper with the pick to get more resistance from the strings and slow down the movement. On the downstroke, instead, the pick is lighter on the strings and goes away faster. Think about the sound kra cha. Kra cha. Kra cha. Kra cha. Try to make it sound like a rake on the upstroke and like a fast strum on the downstroke. Kra cha. Kra cha. All together, it looks and sounds like this. Just mute the strings with your left hand. The upstroke rake is so important that actually this style is also called dirty rake. Third component, the left hand, is basically lifting from the strings on the upstroke and goes back in position to mute or fret whatever notes are on the beat on the downstroke. Obviously, this is just a basic movement and heavily depends on what notes are played. To put it all together, it sounds like this, and it's actually the comping on the verse of Pride and Joy. Notice, it's not playing an E major when starting the verse, like many people do, it's just going for the open strings. I suggest, for the pride and joy of your neighbors, you practice this quite a little bit before moving to the riff itself. Let's take a look at the intro. It starts like this. It starts actually on the M2, on the up beat, so you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. You do a downstroke slide from the D to the E on the 3rd fret of the B string, while playing the E string as well, so the two strings together. Then you play a series of upstrokes on those two strings. Upstroke here is counterintuitive, but it definitely shaped the sound. One. Then you do a downstroke on the E, low E note, actually on the upbeat. So it's three, four. Then you do a series of upstrokes. Now we play the first part again in a slightly different way, but we always go first with the low E downstroke. So now the actual slide is on the down bit. Three, four. And we stop. So let me put this brief thing all together and show it to you. One, two. Three, four, one. Then we do this. Again, downstroke on the low E on the upbeat and downstroke and bend on the A note. Be careful to mute all the other notes. Downstroke again while releasing the bending, not after, so you get a little grace note. Pull off to G, downstroke on E, open string upstroke, and then downstroke on low E with a small power chord. Okay, this is how this first part sounds all put together. Remember to put the low E downstroke on the last upbeat of the bar to join the parts together. That is so genius and so important. One, two, three, four, one.
Now we get into the basic groove of the song that, as said, is played on open strings on the upstroke and mute or play whatever notes come on the downbeat downstroke. Now that we are adding notes, you want to be very careful to mute all the strings that you don't want to sound, like this. Sometimes you use the arch of your first finger to stop the strings, sometimes it's a little bit of the palm of your right hand. But muting is far too complex to be fully discussed in this video, so let me know in the comments if you want me to make a specific video about it. These are the notes, you just need to alternate them with the open string upstroke. <laughs> When you play the G sharp, you skip the open string upstroke and just do an upstroke on the note itself. Be careful to mute all other strings. Then we get to this chord that looks like a B9 or A6 chord. We don't hear the bass though, we just hear the upper notes. This spot he reverses the picking. It goes downstroke on the low E, even if it's an upbeat, and then upstroke on the upper strings. This is counterintuitive, but it has a very distinctive sound. As opposed to, you can hear it sounds completely different. Because playing these upper three strings with an upstroke does definitely have sound. Another open string upstroke takes us back into the flow, into the Texas shuffle groove, and we replay identical up until the B9 chord. Now that we move into the A chord, it doesn't change the right hand pattern, it keeps the alternate going, but it does use the third finger on the first A and the first finger on the second A, the one on the beat. Then we play the exact same riff but one string below, so that's in A. And we do the same picking inversion again to go back to E. And then we play the first part, the E riff, again. Okay, let me play this whole part slow for you. One, two, three, four. The final part is the exit lick leading into the verse. It starts with the second finger on the second fret of the G string, slide to the fourth fret and upstroke the B string to grab the D note with your first finger. You play this thing three times. Now you pick down while sliding from the 4th to the 2nd fret, from B to A, and I mean while sliding, not after, so you get a grace note. Pull off to G and downstroke on E. Now you do a downstroke on the open A string quickly to get to B. Be quick with the slide to make it sound like it's just one slided note. Very fast. Now we change picking again, it's all downstrokes. When we get to 
this A, he does a little group by hammering on on the B flat, pulling off and going down stroke on the G. Then we do an up stroke on the E, on this E over here, and then a down stroke to get some sort of a chord, at least on the record, it sounds like there's a little bit of the chord, it's not just the low E. The final lick, it is important you do it with this picking. Most people do down strokes and it doesn't sound right. You have to be able to separate the two notes a little bit. Here's how you do it. You start down stroke with the second finger on the second fret and slide to the fourth fret, then do a series of up strokes on the D and B notes together. If you apply a lot of strength and incline your wrist a little bit towards yourself, you press on the strings, the two notes should sound clearer even at that speed. Then you slide down from B to A, pull off to G, down stroke on E, down on low E, another pick and inversion, and finish with G, A, B flat, B. Always down stroke. Let me play this finishing lick all together and very slow for you. One, two, three. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and comment this video if you want to subscribe also, thank you, but activate all notifications with the little bell to know when I upload new videos. I hope you will learn this incredible riff, Alberto Lombardi, ciao!